In this part of the program, we'll look at some basic operations, component locations, and disassembly procedures for the 300 CE Cabriolet. We'll start by opening the soft top. While a single switch controls the operation of the top, you'll have to operate these two flip-down levers by hand. With the latches completely open, turn the ignition on and push the soft top switch toward the rear. Actuating the soft top switch will automatically lower the window's end roll bar. Be sure that you have enough clearance to operate the top and that everyone in the area stays clear of the top mechanism while it's moving. And once the top has been secured, the windows will return to their original position. Finally, you'll close the latches completely. If you flick the soft top switch twice, rapidly, like clicking a computer mouse, all four windows will simultaneously open or close, depending upon whether you push the switch forward or backward. In the event of a problem, the soft top can be raised manually. You need to use the special wrench that's found in the toolkit of the car. Place the special wrench on the release mechanism behind the back seat, and be careful not to drop the wrench because it'll go down inside. The top is pretty heavy, so you have to get a second person to help you lift it. Bring it all the way forward. Once the front of the roof is closed and latched, come back and raise the rear section, close the cover, and with a special wrench, lock it down. Using the grip in the frame, pull the soft top down to the windshield frame until the lock catches engage. In order to access some of the soft top components, we'll have to remove the rear seat. We'll release the two orange tabs and remove the cushion. Some of the important components that are located under the rear seat are the convenience relay, the roll bar control unit, the soft top control unit, the seat belt extender control unit, and inside this padding is the vacuum pump for the central locking system. To remove the seat back, lower the armrest and remove the two screws from the upper corners. Then lift the seat back straight up. In order to gain access to such things as the seat belt extender, window regulator, connections for the top, both hydraulic and electric, we'll need to remove the interior trim panel on both sides of the car. We'll start by removing the screw for the plastic cover. Remove the Phillips screws for the front chrome trim. Then pull the weather strip out. Carefully remove the linkage from the rear at the compartment cover opening. If you pull up on the cover, you'll run the risk of breaking the linkage. Now you can lift the side cover out of the way. Next, loosen the upper rear fastener for the side trim panel. Now we can remove the four Phillips screws for the side panel.
Now you can lift the side cover out of the way. Next, unbolt the seat belt retainer. To remove the seat belt extender, remove the two screws. Slide the extender forward and unplug it. The speaker is retained with two fasteners at the top and another at the bottom. Remove the pliable sealant from around the edges of the panel by using your finger. This will expose the panel and give you better access to the screws. But remember, when you replace the panel, replace the pliable sealant because this is an important corrosion protection material. This access panel is made of fiber material and is retained with four screws. Now you have access to the window regulator and the hydraulics for the top. If you were to remove the top, you'd have to disconnect the hydraulic lines and plug them, both here and another one hidden up inside here. Remember, for safety reasons, you should never disconnect the pressurized hydraulic line. First thing you have to do is turn the ignition off, then manually cycle the top five times before disconnecting the lines. To remove the entire top assembly, we'll have to remove these two bolts and one bolt in front. The other hydraulic connectors that you'll need to remove if you're replacing the soft top are located here. Since these lines are easy to confuse, be sure to mark the lines before you remove them. Be sure to mark the location of the plate by scribing around the edge. After disconnecting the power cable and the ground for the heated rear window, the entire top assembly can be lifted off. In order to remove the rear glass, the first thing we have to do is remove this panel. The next thing we have to do is to remove the headliner. We do that by removing the screws on either side here. And then peeling back the headliner where it's connected with Velcro. <clears throat> and removing the headliner all the way from the front. When you peel it back, you'll notice that there's an electrical connection here for the heated rear window. The next thing we have to do is to take off 27 nuts that go around the perimeter of the window. You'll see some of them on the side here. The ones along this area will be accessible because you've already taken the headliner down from the front. Up in this area, they're a little bit difficult to get to, so you take a plastic wedge and insert it between the glass and the window frame. and that will allow you to get your fingers and an open end wrench in there and loosen those nuts. We're always interested in hearing from the viewers of these Education for Excellence programs. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please call or fax us.